Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's eight o'clock on Wednesday, the 25th of October. And we're reading Commonwealth Daily Prayer from the Church of England for Wednesday during ordinary time. You'll find it in the book towards the beginning, <clears throat> after prayer during the day. Uh, online at Redeemer's Daily Prayer, the Church of England's website, downloadable as app for Apple Android device. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, uh, Tuesday to Saturday for Divine Office. Uh, you may join me live at the same times uh, by Zoom, code on the Bride Church's we website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook and uh, the audio will be on my Dominic Global YouTube channel uh, presently, uh, hopefully, although uh, I had had a comment from yesterday to say that there was no audio. So... Uh, you may just have to be patient because the last couple of mornings uh, or evenings uh, there's been a bit of a lead in before the audio begins. We're also commemorating Crispin and Crispinian, um, so not much of an adjustment to our standard Wednesday in ordinary time running order, but if you'd like to look up 25th of October, halfway through the book, Saints Days and Festivals, you'll find direction there to any adjustments you might like to make. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's glorious name, O Lord, our Governor. How glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. And I consider your heavens the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained. What are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels, and crown them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands, and put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Night has passed, and the day lies open before us, let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> it being Wednesday in ordinary time, it's not unusual for us to find ourselves dealing with Psalm 119, and so we are this morning. Psalm 119, you'll find 119 at the back of the book in the Psalter. We're not reading all of it, you'll be pleased to hear. We're just reading the last two or three octaves, which uh, begin at 153, verse 153 of Psalm 119. 153 to the end. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord. O consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. According to your promise, give me life. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. Many there are that persecute and oppress me, yet do I not swerve from your testimonies. It grieves me when I see the treacherous, for they do not keep your word. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth, and all your righteous judgments endure for evermore. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. <clears throat> I am as glad of your word as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them. But your law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law, 
nothing shall make them stumble. Lord, I have looked for your salvation, and I have fulfilled your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies, and greatly have I loved them. I have kept your commandments and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you have taught me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand reach out to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise you, and let your judgments be my help. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. O seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord. Scrolling past our first reading to a song of the word of the Lord, our canticle for morning prayer on Wednesday in ordinary time. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, (coughs) but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy, to our God, who will richly pardon. This from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints. Crispin and Crispinian were shoemakers and lived in the 3rd century. They are reputed to have preached the Christian faith in Gaul, whilst exercising their trade, and so, like St. Paul, earning his living as a tent maker, were no drain on the Christian community. They were put to death for their faith at the beginning of the Diocletian persecution, and died in about the year 287 in Rome. <coughs> so to our first Bible reading, Ezekiel 39 from 21, uh, if you are following electronically, and the Ecclesiasticus reading, which is apocryphal, and not everybody may have an apocrypha in their Bibles at home, you'll find a link which takes you through to Ezekiel 39.21. Or if you're following electronically, you might like to just look that up in your search engine and find an NRSV, New Revised Standard Version, Ezekiel 39 from 21. Uh, but the link takes you through to the Aremus Suite and its Bible browser element. Excellent Simon Kershaw work. Thank you to him and uh, for uh, all the other offers that uh, Aremus make available. Do have a look there, including morning evening prayer, of course. Ezekiel 39, so it's the uh, book of Ezekiel, prophecy if you're following a Holy Bible, uh, between half and two thirds of the way through, so you turn to halfway through, that's the wisdom material, move towards the back, that's the prophecy, uh, comes next, next section, after Jeremiah and Isaiah, you'll find uh, Ezekiel, uh, somewhere about there, within Ezekiel, we can the large number 39, chapter 39, at the head of the paragraph, and the small numbers in the text are the verses, we're going from verse 21, Ezekiel 39, from 21, to the end. I will display my glory among the nations, and all the nations shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid on them. The house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward, and the nations shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they dealt treacherously with me, so I hid my face from them, gave them into the hand of their adversaries, and they all fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanness and their transgressions, and hid my face from them. Therefore thus says the Lord God of 
says the Lord God, now I will restore the fortunes of Jacob and have mercy on the whole house of Israel, and I will be jealous for my holy name. They shall forget their shame and all the treachery they have practised against me when they live securely in their land with no one to make them afraid. When I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them from their enemies' lands, and through them I have displayed my holiness in the sight of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God, because I sent them into exile among the nations, and then gathered them into their own land. I will leave none of them behind, and I will never again hide my face from them when I pour out my spirit upon the house of Israel, says the Lord God. So this great, obviously great defining moment in the psychi- psyche, uh, psychology of the uh, Jewish people, this going into exile. If God was their God, if they lived with God, if God was good, then they would be secure and have the rains, have their harvest. They live well before their God. But if that isn't the case, if they don't live well with their God, they're taken to exile. They uh, examine their navel, they think what might have gone wrong. <clears throat> and then as they're returned to um, their land um, by the changes of powers and uh, the subsequent um, empire, restored the people that the previous empires had taken to exile. It was obviously more lucrative and more successful because uh, they took tribute from the people who were on their own land, whereas the previous took the, the privileged away and then had to clearly look after them and sort of sustain them in their own country. But um, for God's people, as they returned, those in leadership sort of developed their theology. People would say much of the Hebrew scriptures written at that sort of time. But if we live right with God, then all will be well. If we don't, um, we'll not have the rains in due season and uh, we will be taken to exile. We'll be at war with those who live around, around us rather than being secure. And uh, so this, we've got those two paragraphs. One says we've not lived right before God <clears throat> and uh, we've been given into the hand of our adversaries and we've fallen by the sword um, because of our uncleanness and transgressions. So um, I'm not necessarily going to say one thing or the other, but <clears throat> it seems to me that um, to be a godly, God-fearing Jew... One should uh, recognise on balance the um, instructions in the Hebrew text for um, life before God. And whilst there's an element of holiness, there is also care for the orphan, the stranger and the foreigner that lives in our land. And who knows whether um, the current administration is looking at uh, the first half of our reading today. Then there are those that have been taken as hostages, for example, those who have uh, fallen in the Holocaust... (coughs) and being tortured to death. Those have been persecuted around the world for their combined ethnicity and uh, religion. One of the most um, connected sort of ethnicity, religion sort of connections probably of uh, all peoples, perhaps. Um, But the second paragraph speaks of hope, restoration. I bring them back. You remember you were separated and dispersed and persecuted, but I've restored you to security. I've given you back what you were hoping for. And you've been restored. And so, whether we're Jewish or not, we might have had experiences of life where a relationship has gone awry. We might retrospectively recognise our contribution to that. And we might be looking at a new relationship. We might just have booked a marriage, or a, whether it's in a church or a registry office. Let's say we might have uh, come through our first date and decided we're going to move in together. And so there's this new opening, this new hope. <clears throat> we might have had a sickness. Um, it might have been recurring. It might have been um, done away with our last tests. Might seem that might let us know we're in remission for the time being living in an addiction that comes and goes through good times and bad times. And uh, there'll be another train, as the folk song says, another train coming. So, uh, try to scroll through to our next reading. There we go. John 15 from 18, our next reading. If you're following the Holy Bible, John is the fourth gospel, so turn to two-thirds of the way through. That's the split between the um, Hebrew scriptures and the Greek, first and second covenant. Uh, we move towards the back from that uh, point, and you should find books entitled Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. Within the Gospel of John, one of the four eyewitness accounts that uh, made the cut, as they all repeatedly refer to the twelve apostles, the twelve disciples, uh, we find chapter 15 in the Gospel of John, large number at the head of the paragraph, again in the margin, 15, chapter 15 in the Gospel of John, and within chapter 15 we're looking for verse 18 onwards, John 15. And verse 18, and the verse numbers are the small numbers in the text. Scroll on to it if you're following electronically. Jesus said to his disciples, if the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. If you belonged to the world, the world would love you as its own, because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. 
Remember the word that I said to you, servants are not greater than their master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would have no sin, not have sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. It was to fulfil the word that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, he comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. <coughs> so a paragraph written by and for people who are persecuted. <coughs> there is that uh, slightly, un uh, throughout the Jehanan material, there is a, a dislike, if not hatred, for Jewish people. So I guess the majority of the Johannine community were Gentile background <coughs> and or happy to forget their Jewish roots. And, and it would seem to me that this should be understood as relating to the Jewish authorities, relating to um, those Jews who would want to do away with the Christian way as a heretical sect. But not all, at that time also, but not all Jews of any ethnicity and religious persuasion um, since then and now because <clears throat> we've got that line uh, as it says in their law so um, it seems to me that we're much better off recognizing the connections we have with the other faiths particularly judaism with which christianity is most closely related as of course our uh, um, rescuer our redeemer our role model is a jew <clears throat> so we need to hold that to the fore when we're dealing with Johannine stuff and not be too um, polarized otherwise we're inclined to make enemies and uh, become separated and to allow ourselves to become misinformed and hate and anger and war, violence can develop from that. Jesus said to his disciples, if the world hates you, beware, be aware that it hated me first. So it seems to me that these people are undergoing persecution. Um, they persecuted, servants not greater than master, they persecuted me, they will persecute you. So to some extent this is being presented, it seems to me, as a badge of honour, though I would not recommend us just uh, turning the other cheek. I know that's a gospel instruction, but we should seek justice. Look at Paul when he was about to be flogged, he said, actually, I'm Roman. And uh, when that was reported back, he was uh, not flogged. So we should not submit to, for instance, domestic violence, slavery, uh, war, um, physical, corporal, capital punishment i don't accept that that's what this says we should submit to but i think this is sort of uh, if it is inevitable that we are being persecuted we should recognize that persecution comes from the fact that we are god's people that can become sort of an inverted arrogance and pride that i'm just being godly and it's because i'm being godly that people don't like me whereas in fact it's because we're not a particularly pleasant human being and it's gone to our head and we're narcissistic and our faith is supporting us in that uh, aberrant expression of humanity then the last paragraph, only three lines after the previous 12, or however many there are, um, but very significant. When the advocate comes, the spirit of truth will testify, and you also are to testify. So despite the challenges and difficulties of living as a believing human, particularly, let us say, for those who are in the Holy Land, Christians from Arab and Jewish background, Jewish believing people who believe on God and uh, would seek to live and work in human, humane way and express their faith in a liberal and supportive and encouraging hospitable way um, those uh, within islam ditto we must be encouraged that as we speak the truth that people will recognize despite persecution that uh, god's rule will be established so to the responsory back in morning prayer on wednesday lord you will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me with glory lord you will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me with glory for I am always with you, you hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. The Song of Zechariah. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear 
holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Source, Saviour, Seal. Three in one, one in three. We come to you at the beginning of this day, and uh, we thank you for that call, for the recognition that when we are in and with and working, abiding, learning, studying, striving, worshipping with and in and for you, that things will be well. And that even if we are exiled and punished and persecuted, that, that is because you were. And yet we look for restoration, security and hope and pray that by the power of your spirit we may be harbingers of peace and bring succour and encouragement to those amongst whom we live as we speak and uh, exemplify and witness to that restoration both from our history as a church but also in our history as individuals maybe our own witness and story maybe the witness and story the testimony of those we know World Council of Churches, prayers for the Caribbean. There's an almighty list of islands there, a whole paragraph of names, of places. We are thankful for how churches have responded to disasters and served all in need. We pray for the strengthening of all who faithfully witness through word and deed to the gospel in those lands. Turning to Green Christian's prayer diary. And I think I may have to pause as I look to see. I oh, know we're all right there. It's print ready and so sometimes the paragraphs move across the pages and it's difficult to locate where we move on to the ski tourism industry plays a major role in the economies of many europeans many of europe's mountain regions writes dr samuel morin et al but declining snow cover as a result of climate change is disrupting ski resorts across the continent dramatically increasing the number of days where no skiing is possible as a result these resorts are increasingly turning to artificial snow making as an adaptation measure to produce reliable snow However, the effectiveness of snowmaking is variable. Use is controversial. And there are various stats. So uh, we pray for those uh, towns, counties, areas, countries, as they consider how best to endeavour to sustain and maintain um, the skiing uh, economy in their countries in the face of climate change as uh, snow cover is uh, reducing <clears throat> and therefore their income. We pray that uh, sense is to, uh, to the fore, wisdom is to the fore as they decide about artificial snow cover and uh, presumably the inevitable energy demands and contributions sort of positive feedback to climate change in refrigerating that water um, and spraying it all over the place. Um, maybe we just have to recognise that, mind you, I'm not a skier, so it's easier for me to say but uh, pray for wisdom for those who have to make those decisions. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our concern and work for the environment. And Pope Francis' prayer for creation includes the lines, O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. A beneficial cycle of prayer invites on Wednesday to pray for teachers, and so we do, those who teach in schools, those who teach skills for independent living and uh, skills and hobbies to broaden and extend our experience of who we are. And we thank you for them. We pray they will have adequate resource as uh, pupil numbers drop and we face uh, redundancies. And we pray uh, in years to come. We pray for wisdom for those who have to make decisions, governors and heads and uh, trustees of the um, academies. We pray there will be adequate uh, money those who teach might have a good experience of their job and be encouraged and inspired as they see those they teach move on to even greater things than they could ever aspire to themselves. 
thank you for our church wardens. We pray today for John and Chris looking after Holton. Also Jonathan Weniston St Peter's. Uh, Ginny uh, acting as St Andrew Brownfield. Alison also is Blyford back online there. And uh, Mike at St Peter's Thorrington. Pray for the treasurers and secretaries on those PCCs. We pray to draw others in. Thank you for the ad that's going in the magazine this week. Pray to draw people in by invitation to the committees looking after those churches that we can increase capacity and therefore use and sustainability, viability of those buildings and community assets. And uh, we've got some names for electoral roll at Holton, including Jill, Helen, Anthony, Dot, Betty, Mary, Diane, Marjorie, Joan, Gillian, Linda, Eric, Phyllis, Edith, Jim and Jackie. And in Weniston, we'll include Alison, also the Margarets, Bloomfield, Goldson, Goldston, Angela, Mary, Moyle, Francis, Valerie, Dorothy, Jane, Robert, Cyrilla, Colin, Jennifer, Felicity, Vivian, Graham, Ruth, John, Sally, David, Dana, Joanna, Jean, Suzanne, Clive, Francis, and Colin. <coughs> <coughs> well, I think uh, Clive might have died. However, we thank you for them and for his life, if that's the case. <coughs> And uh, we pray that they might be inspired as they pray, worship, study, serve, that they may grow in their faith and in their experience of your rule, guidance and provision. That through them you may draw others in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. the collect for Wednesday morning from the book reads, Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube. <coughs>